Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. She is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast under our channel, and she's just amazing. She is a cat visionary catalyst, and she is a warrior leader, and she's going to tell you all about that in a little bit, and she's going to show you how you could elevate to new levels in your life and to become the person that you've always dreamed of becoming. So it is a pleasure, an honor. It is, I am very, let's, we were talking about gratitude before. Well, I am. I have gratitude that you are on the show today, Kova. And, you know, tell everybody a little about yourself and like the things that you do. Great. Well, I think the first thing that I want to communicate is that I'm operating from what is wanting, from what is trying to express through me. Yes. So even before I got on the show, it's I'm letting go of my personal self and I'm mm -hmm. letting what is wanting to express to come through. And that is ultimately what I'm here to one model and to help the highest level levels of leaders who are really seeking to create positive systemic change, who are willing to transform themselves and yes. to amplify their impact and to lead because it's not about them. It's about something higher to create yes. the global transformation that we're really needing right now. So I am a enlightened warrior leader in training myself. And mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm a forger of enlightened warrior leaders and I'm a catalyst of visionaries. Now, what kind of challenges did you go through in life that really made you want to help people and reach out to people and really help others become a, a visionary catalyst and help people learn to overcome their obstacles, be able to be a warrior like yourself? Yeah. Well, when I hear you ask that question is, why am I doing what I'm doing is what I'm understanding. And <laughs> It started many years ago. I got fired from basically my dream job, like the Google of social media marketing, one of the top places to work in Austin, Texas, downtown yeah. location, right on the river, MacBooks and Whole Foods catered lunch every day. I got fired from that job and I was completely baffled, completely baffled. I'd never been fired from anything in my entire life. And at the time, I had started to come to a realization that I was wanting something more Yeah, that looked like health coaching at the time because I was having health issues. I wasn't right. getting my period naturally. I'd tried Western medicines route and it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And this led me to start seeking solutions for what started out as my problems. And it led to a 36 day water fast. Wow. Don't recommend, but I usually need to pause and say that again. I fasted on water for 36 days and that experience, I'm still integrating one <laughs> and two, I learned to love myself for the first time. I uh, was experiencing a relationship with food where I was letting food control me. And uh, when I cut out food, I had the opportunity to come into Timelessness, mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. presence, mm -hmm. and a love that completely changed my life. Wow. So do you think by purifying yourself, cleansing yourself, you really it cleanse your mind, your body, your spirit, your your whole entire life by just change, making changes in your life and really cleansing out the toxins mentally, physically, spiritually. And it brought you to find yourself in a whole different area of life and maybe a whole new person that you didn't even know exist. I could never have imagined that. That was beyond perception. That was beyond mind. Yeah. And that's where I really got my first tastes of enlightenment. And I double check myself on that too. I muscle test whether or not I've ex actually experienced enlightened states of consciousness. Yeah. And my mind is still trying to understand what occurred. Right. 
mostly because when I signed up for it, it was to heal my health problems, right? Yes. And I didn't sign up for anything. It was a calling. It was an inner drive that I could never have willed my way to do. Right. And I remember researching it because it said spiritual experience. And I come from a family where I was raised Jewish. We are considered more religious than we were spiritual. And I had mm -hmm. never had experiences of spiritual I didn't even know what to call it at the time. So when I yeah. read that, I remember distinctively sitting in a coffee shop in the domain in Austin, Texas, and being super curious about it. And that's ultimately what ended up happening. I, yeah. I went in for one reason and I came out something that was beyond me. Right. That's amazing. That's powerful. That's really powerful. And were you, were you confused in what was going on? Because you, you changed into this new person. Were you trying to figure out who this new person was? You know, was it like a kind of, because it, you know, when you go through process of change, you know, was it, was it, a, did it happen in little spurts or was it something that kind of just like snowballed very quickly and, and it kind of, you were at a loss for a second trying to figure it all out. I've been at a loss for not, not I'm not at a loss anymore, but it's taken me eight years and about a million dollars to recover from that. So I had no idea the change that had happened at the time and how it would change my life whatsoever. Yeah. All right. I knew was that what I was experiencing, it did purify my body, like you asked. Mm -hmm. It started functioning better. And what's so interesting about it is like the longer that I fasted, my mind started going completely still. There was no mind. Yeah. And I was just here. There was a ability just to know instantly, mm -hmm. to recall information like I've never been able to recall information. Right. It was like I was completely connected to the divine. And uh, it was the epitome of an extreme and I want to right. make sure to communicate that with your listeners very clearly. That was an extreme way of having a spiritual experience. And I've actually learned that I have a special skill of determination <laughs> that when <laughs> put towards the right direction, it can completely change worlds. And at the yeah. time, I didn't know that. So I have taken the last many years to integrate those frequencies that love that inner peace that things I'm still not even understanding right like I'm integrating that into my body and then also just being grounded in reality again because I went beyond reality and I didn't go beyond per like duality like when you look at the scale of consciousness there's like zero to a thousand 200 below is fear-based, 200 and above is goes to a thousand, a thousand being enlightenment, 200 being acceptance. And it requires yeah. courage to do it. Right. When you get up to 600 is actually when you start going into non-duality. And I haven't yeah. experienced that. So that is where I have more awakening to do. And I don't even know if that necessarily will happen in this lifetime. This was yeah. purely something that was wanting to express through me. And I allowed it to. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. So, you know, you had mentioned to me that you should dive deeper, not forward. And it sounds like you dive deeper, but what's your, to, for people who may not understand what you're talking about, explain what you mean by dive deeper, not forward. Because you hear so many coaches talk about moving forward, moving forward, and you're saying dive deeper. Are you diving deeper into yourself, really understanding the, the inside, you know, what's going on within you, that inner power? I have, I, I'm watching my mind ob observe, like I'm observing my mind communicate what it wants to communicate to you. And what I'm wanting and what I'm feeling in regards to the question that you're asking me is you are giving me the opportunity to really bring your listeners and now my listeners into wisdom that is embodied. Mm -hmm. 
I can speak to the mind and I'm very logical. I'm very good at that. Yeah. And uh, what I mean by going deeper is really digging out the gems right from this very rare experience mm -hmm. and actually sharing it as part of my philosophy on enlightened leadership yeah and also helping listeners understand why i even have the ability to communicate about it yeah cuz when i speak to you it, you really you go within yourself to find the answers. Like there is a, a per, you know, our inner self, our intuition, you know, our, our spirit, our spirit within us is really what's guiding you. It seems like. I'm doing my very best to let my personal self out of the way. <laughs> so do you, do you feel like um, for people who want to become you know, want to become a warrior leader. They want to be really in touch with themselves. They want to find out who they are. What kind of advice would you give them? You know, because many people are trying to figure out who they are as a person, you know, and, you know, they want to become that that warrior. They want that inner power to come out of them. You know, they, they want to flow and be the person that they were meant to be. You know, what's your your advice for those people? I think it requires courage to go outside the norm. Mm -hmm. To have experiences that expand your mind. Mm -hmm. We live in a society that is constantly speaking to the mind. And then we've created programs and operating systems that have basically replicated the mind again. Yeah. We love objectivity. Mm hmm What I'm speaking about is beyond objectivity. It is beyond the mind. Right. And from an enlightened warrior leadership, enlightened warrior leadership perspective, mm -hmm. it requires mastering the mind and really learning how to let go of the mind. What is beyond the mind? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We have a very limited perception of what we see. And it isn't all about us, even though our ego likes to tell us that it is. Right. So when it comes to your listeners, to the people who are really wanting to catalyze global transformation, yeah, it's going to require courage. Yeah. That is the must to be able to switch out of what you've been doing, who you've been, how you live your life, even why you live your life. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to even just sidestep out of that, you're never going to be able to have access to what's trying to be expressed through you. Yeah. That's so true, you know, and, you know, for people, a lot of people, it's very hard to let go. The mind takes control over a lot of people, you know, and, and I think everyone's experienced this at one time or another. And some people go through it more, more dif with more difficulty than others. But a lot of times our thoughts, you know, take over and they create feelings, you know, even sometimes people build scenarios in their head that don't even exist yet because they're thinking about the future and they're not living in the present moment, mm -hmm. you know? And when they do that, then their mind takes over and then their mind controls their body, their feelings, and can actually cause anxiety and all these other things. And that prevents us from being a warrior leader. That prevents us from being able to, you know, dive deeper into ourselves and really figure out who we are and being able to be that person and, and rise that above that chaos and be the leader we want to be. So for you, how do we let go? How do we let go of our mind and our thoughts and be able to focus on what's important, becoming that warrior leader, being that strong, 
you know, by versus, you know, individual that, you know, wants to be all they can be and really, you know, elevate to new levels of life that they didn't even think at one point were possible. Well, why don't I start with an example? Because I understand that some of this feels kind of lofty and I'm going to ground it right now. Mm -hmm. I've been working with an extraordinary visionary leader for the last many years. This person is the expert in their field, and they've been building systems to spread the basically tool to awaken yourself, to experience emotional freedom, to really be stable and capable and really do hear what you're here to do. So that's a little context about this person. Yes. Now, when it comes to letting go for someone at that caliber, someone who's already making a very substantial impact and is really wanting to forge global transformation, it involves looking and taking responsibility for the emotions that are creating the patterns that are preventing that person from realizing their next level of impact. Mm -hmm. Now, how do they, when, when they have that blockage, how, you know, are there some ways that they can unblock themselves so they can move forward and they can create that vision yeah. that they force for themselves? Number one, this person specifically asks for help. That is going to be going to be one of the key differentiators between people who are where they are and get where they want to go and even higher than get where they want to go go where is being asked of them. Yeah. yeah. So number one, this person asks for help. They're willing to look at themselves and they actually, they seek the correct counsel and not just any counsel. And they let themselves be humbled by mm -hmm. life. Right. Being willing to look at themselves in a non-judgmental way and take responsibility for the emotions that are causing them to show up lesser than their ideal vision of impact and ultimately their greatest contribution to humanity. I like that. Now, do you like to do meditation? Do you find that meditation helps you? As a enlightened warrior leader who is constantly allowing myself to be trained by life. Meditation is the foundation to be able to observe and experience and to even be able to notice when there's something off or that needs to shift. There's three ways in which we can catch patterns. There's before it happens, mm -hmm. while it's happening, and then after it's happening. Right. And with mindfulness, we can basically start developing the skill set, which is integral to becoming an enlightened warrior leader, to be able to number one, catch those things. And then also at the higher levels, which is the people that I'm working with, they're already doing this work. Yes. But they're allowing themselves to be humbled mm -hmm. so that they can serve at a greater level. Right. I like that. Now there's so many ways to meditate. How do you meditate? I've had so much training in this. It's interesting. Number one thing I'm going to communicate is find the meditation that works for you. And this mm -hmm. comes from, I'll give backstory on this one. I've been meditating for over a decade and it started with recordings, like an app on my phone. I was experiencing a lot of stress at the time and that's where I started. And then when I asked for help after the fast, because I was beyond my level of mastery to be able to integrate that experience. They taught us labeling, mm -hmm. thinking, thinking. So a thought goes by and I say thinking, thinking, and it basically dissolves the thought loop. I also mm -hmm. really like that one because it's super helpful for pain, feeling pain whenever you're injured, just label it, feeling pain, speak directly to it, feeling pain, and it dissolves. Specific, specific circumstance of that, I was a, a guide in wilderness therapy for adolescent teen boys and one of the boys was doing something in the woods that basically got him to cut his eyelid and he was blood all over his face. And he comes running to me. And the 
first thing I tell him to do is to label it feeling pain, feeling pain. And he later comes back to me after he gets his injury completely taken care of. And he was like, that worked. That was amazing. And that was a specific example of bringing mindfulness to our experience of reality and, and doing it. So it actually lets the nervous system relax. Right. So that's another circumstance that I've learned. The biggest thing that I've noticed is that once I became mindful, I realized that just being mindful wasn't actually enough to be able to let go of the belief systems that I was having and the reality that the belief systems were causing. And that's when I got introduced to letting go the pathway of surrender by Dr. David Hawkins, who I know we've talked about personally. He was a renowned psychiatrist and MD. So this man was a physician and he led the largest psychiatric ward in New York. And he has lots of books that are amazing at speaking to the rational mind because that's something you have to understand our brain is function is to be able to understand things objectively. And he speaks to that, but he's able to speak about the non-linear, the things that I was not able to speak to because they are beyond the mind earlier. And he's able to write about it. And I was introduced to that book working with a high performance coach at the time. And uh, I think I told you this last time, I I was told that I was constantly trying to control things, even with meditation. I'd been meditating morning and evening for years at that point, but I was still trying to control things. And that's when I got introduced into that book. And uh, the premise of it, which I discussed in our last episode is how do you release negativity and have higher levels of action, higher levels of consciousness that you have available to. Like what I talked about my story earlier And the fast is like, when you look at that from the scale of consciousness, which is something that Dr. Hawkins created, it's a logarithmic scale. And if you haven't seen it, go Google it. Whoever's listening to this, you'll see see a scale that goes from zero to a thousand, 200 and below is all associated with force and fear. 200 and above is all associated with love and power. And that's another book that I read while I was in treatment and recovering, which is called power versus force. And so what Hawkins did in that book was he gave you a tool to yeah. release attachments. Right. That is so huge because that's one thing people have the hardest time doing is releasing attachments and especially the negative attachments. They hold on to it over their shoulder and it hinders them. And the people who are, are able to release those attachments are the people who will thrive and elevate you know, into that warrior leader because they are able to get at the toxicity out of them. They're late able to free themselves and become the person they want to be. And, you know, for you personally, from your own experience, how are you able to just detach? Because that's, a, that's a, something that so many people want to do. And they're like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It took a lot of trial and error. <laughs> I lead with the mind. Personally, everyone leads differently. Some people lead with emotion. Some people lead with the mind. And uh, when I first started trying to let go, I uh, was just doing it mentally. I was like, so thought would come by and I'm like, I'm going to let that go. And I remember doing this at the ClickFunnels conference many years ago. This was before COVID. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm going to let that one go. Just consciously tell myself I'm going to let that one go. So again, that's still using my mindfulness to let go of a thought loop. The only thing is at the time, I didn't realize that was actually letting go of a thought loop until Mm -hmm. I got on the plane and had a panic attack right after that conference. And I remember going up to the front of the paint, front of the plane where the flight attendants are. And uh, I don't know what shifted other than the fact is I stopped trying to let go of the thought patterns with my mind. I gave myself permission to actually feel the panic that I was experiencing And it was so intense enough that it was actually able to bypass the mind. I think that's why I was like, oh, I got it this time because I was able to let it go. And that looked like going from fear on the scale of consciousness, which again is under 200 and is Mm -hmm. life taking. It is associated with force. And, you know, I imagine brunt force when I say that. Yeah. And I moved up to acceptance and I remember sitting on the plane. I went back to my seat after that and I started reading the book again because I was like, I think I just did it. And I read the book and I think I'm in acceptance. 
-hmm. And it was the first time that I viscerally got the experience of letting go. Yeah. So it was really learn how to accept it and then just learn how to just let it fly away. You know, I always yeah. talk about, you know, like um, I always used to say to, to patients, like, you know, I always, when I would uh, try to detach myself from any type of negativity and anything that was really hindering on me, that felt like a pound of bricks on my shoulders. I used to meditate and then I would visualize a dove and then I would visualize that dove on my shoulder. And then I would take all those things that were causing me any type of pain, negative emotion, whatever the case may be. And I would, I would envisualize and it just going on the dove's wings. And then I would take a deep breath and I would watch that dove fly away in my head. Mm -hmm. And then I would just relax and do the breathing exercises and meditate. And I felt enlightened afterwards. I mm. felt like if that makes any sense to you. It sounds like you felt lighter and that yeah. even your mind became lighter and clearer when you released. Right, exactly, exactly. I think it's so important because so many people hold on. They have things that happened to them in the past and they hold on and they don't detach. And it's mm -hmm. so important, I think, for people to learn to detach so they mm -hmm. can dive deeper into themselves because I think the more negativity we have, the more blockage we have and mm -hmm. the block will cause us not to really be elevate into the person that we want, which mm -hmm. is become a warrior leader and to, to shine. You know, we want to, you know, we want to, we want to shine and make our, our voice known. We want to change. We want to make global change. We want to be able to change the world as, you know, as much as possible while we're here, you mm -hmm. know, What's your thoughts on that? I mean, as soon as you're like, this is what is required to become an enlightened warrior leader. I was like, yes, this is what's required. And my audience is already a group of people who are already practicing self-acceptance. They are mm -hmm. already practicing non-judgmentalism and forgiveness. They are already accepting things that might not change and actually accepting things. There's multiple steps to the letting go process that I've actually added my own steps from getting to study under a master EFT practitioner and trainer and studying Hawkins work, but it's talking about mastery. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm really doing with people is I am the forger mm -hmm. of their warrior to become more masterful, to expand their impact. And you have to understand too, is like, this is character building at the end of the day. When we are looking at leaders who are making a global impact or making a stand for change that could change the face of our country right now, these people, they stand forth with integrity. Yes. And integrity is only possible above 200 on the scale of consciousness. Yes. So when it comes to forging these enlightened warrior leaders, they are already individuals of high integrity. They are mm -hmm. already committed to making a global impact that is fulfilling their higher purpose. Yeah. And to do that, they have to seek higher and higher levels of mastery. Right. I, I think that is amazing, you know, and I like that the way you say, you know, becoming your own master, you know, and thinking about that, you know, that just that term just brings power to you, you know, it makes you feel powerful, like cap that you're capable of anything, you know, that you can shower the world with, with your presence, you can shower the world with your goodness, you know, and it's just, just the, just the thought of that phrase, you know, you could, I could feel the sense of power and power just mm -hmm. around us. You know? And it's so, it's so important. I think people to really, when they, when they, when they say to say, say phrases out loud and then to see how it makes them feel. And if it's, it's a positive feeling mm -hmm. and to really repeat it, I think, and, and, mm -hmm. and they believe it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, take on that. I mean, the biggest thing I want to tell your listeners is to listen to this over and over 
one of the reasons we're not going into more content, we're going deeper into other content is because of mastery. Yes. Mastery is obtained through repetition. Tony mm -hmm. Robbins has been saying that very loudly to lots of people for a very yes. long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can feel it in my voice, right? Yeah. Like when I communicated mastery to me, you, you could feel it, right? Yes. And that's ultimately what I'm doing is like, I'm calling forth the mastery in your listeners. I'm calling forth the mastery, the seek to the desire to realize themselves, to make a global impact as the result of their mastery. Yeah. And that is why it's a combination between business and a spiritual path. What I'm talking about is a calling. Yes. Well, you know, just just the the energy you portray, you could feel the power, you know. And even if you want to, if you want to tie in spirituality and business, you need it both in order to succeed. You mm -hmm. know, if you that successful business person, if you want to be that successful mother, if you want to be that successful mm -hmm. person. You have to really go deep down into yourself, mm -hmm. like you said, dive deeper mm -hmm. into yourself and then really, you know, understand who you are and then really, I think, change the things that need to be changed. And like you said, detach some of those things, you know, because I think everybody wants to have that experience that you did where you had that overwhelming change. And I think some people would be scared of it, honestly. You know, I think some people would fear it because the biggest thing that I've I've heard from people is that what if I don't like who I become, you know, and then, you know, but you don't know until you try. Yeah, totally. Always, you could always go backwards, right? If you don't like it, you could always go back to your old ways if you really wanted to, but you might like the new person better, you know? So, you know, I think, you know, go fighting through your fears and be trying to become that new person, that better person, that masterful person, that, you know, that person who, who is now looking at life in a more constructive, positive way, you know, it's, it's worth working on, I think. Well, we can only... Be heard by the people who are ready to hear it mm -hmm. yes but I, I think i think a lot of people you know are listening to this because they want to change they want to they they want to they want to, they, want to, they want to find that person within them that they like you know there's a lot of people who look in the mirror each day and they're not happy with who they are or they might be you know and they just you know but they they want more in their life they know that there's more they just don't know how to become that warrior leader you know but you know and some people might not want to be a warrior leader but they want to mm -hmm. be a better a better person a better you know a better uh stronger more vibrant more confident person you know but i think any any improvement is a vast improvement mm-hmm and also improves the quality of your life, right? Like I'm speaking of the impact that the individuals I work with make by the transformational process and removing what's not serving them to be of greater power and greater service to humanity and the planet and to each other. Yeah. Now, when, when you work with these people, when do you start seeing change? Some people are always curious, they like, how long will it take, you know? And, you know, you have some people who have impatience and they want everything, mm -hmm. they want to feel changed immediately. But mm -hmm. from your own experience, teaching these, these clients of yours, you know, is it small gratifying changes? Is it, you know, do you start to notice, you know, a, a clearer mind, a more confident person? Like what are some of the changes when they start utilizing your services that you see in these people? Impact is going to be the, the greatest one is I've been working with high achieving individuals for a while. This is just a me raising the bar personally. Right. And what I notice with this level of person, it depends. It really depends on the individual. And that's why my premier program, the impact program is four years long. Yeah. Because I've seen the instantaneous 
outcomes of my work tangibly and we're operating from programming yes so sometimes it takes time for the entire conscious mind to mm -hmm. completely update yes you have to understand like one of the clients that i worked with it, he he described it as you planted a seed mm -hmm. and then the tree it, then it rooted Mm -hmm. And then it started to grow and now it's starting to grow leaves. Right. And then the conversation I had with him the other day is like, you're doing so well, like your impact has increased financially. Things have gotten better. Your health has improved. Your relationships have gotten better. Everything in your life has gotten better, including your leadership. Mm -hmm. And there's a higher level of capacity within you to serve even higher, right. to lead from an even more integral and powerful place. Yes. The ability is all within the individual if they are so willing to receive the call. Right. A hundred percent. I love it. I love it. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to summarize it and give some turning points, what are some things that you really want to emphasize that you want people to understand? Change occurs through higher calling. I think is the the first one. I think the thing that really the fast got to shift in me was to recover from something like that required me to devote my life to something higher. Yeah. And for years it's been different causes, different organizations that have been humanity plus also known as they're good for the people, they're good for the planet. And they're also good, good for the bottom line. Triple bottom line is what they're called. Right. It makes life worth living. Mm -hmm. It brings fulfillment to it. And I think that's the other thing. It's like when we reach these higher levels of leadership, and I can speak for myself and the individuals that I work with, is it, it doesn't just produce external outcomes that are, again, beyond what people could ever imagine because their imagination is limited by the programs that they currently have. Yeah. But the other thing that it does is it creates a level of fulfillment yeah, and satisfaction and energy and joy. Joy is my favorite. Inspiration is another one of my favorites. So it fills us up from the inside. And we're living in a culture right now that is devoid of meaning, that is yeah. devoid of fulfillment. We are prioritizing paychecks. We are prioritizing bottom lines before our relationships, our mental health, our physical health, our planet. Like yeah. we are really at a place in our humanity right now where the calling to serve something higher is of the utmost urgency. So right. the best thing I can tell your audience is to stand up, mm -hmm. even if it's hard, even if it's scary. And yeah. do the uncomfortable thing. It literally has to do like, just do it once. I'm not asking you to walk fast on water for 36 days. I don't even recommend that. But <laughs> the calling that I'm invoking in your audience, it's a visceral experience and you'll feel it. The people who are listening are going to feel what I'm communicating and it's right. going to shift them. So again, I encourage your audience to listen to this as many times as they need to. You are here for a specific purpose. It is just time for you to let it through. Right. I love it. I love it. Now tell everybody some of the services that you provide. I've spent the last many years in my recovery process, devoting my life to something higher. And sometimes mm -hmm. they serve and sometimes they, it outdoes its service, right? Sometimes right. my purpose will change. And mm -hmm. recently my purpose changed. I went to Boulder startup week. I moved to Boulder, Colorado about three months ago. And I hadn't had access to that level of individual, let alone that number of individuals since probably before I went through the fast, which was eight years ago. Right. 
I didn't realize I was asking, I, I wasn't asking enough of myself until I did that basically. And yeah. I was already helping visionary leaders create systemic change, but it really got me to see that I needed to up my bar for yeah. who I work with. And be, it, it was because I got to see my level of power, my level right. of competency, AK mastery being right. reflected back to me over and over and over with everyone that I met. And so I actually let go of my previous purpose and I called in my next one. I went through a period of transformation of not knowing, of letting go of my mind and having it freak out that it needed to know all the things and how was it all going to work and consciously yeah. participating in that process. And now I am inviting the highest level of leader in to be supported by me right now to right. catalyze global transformation that is beyond what we know as reality right yeah. now. So I'm extremely grateful to start to bring people into what I'm seeing. That is the purpose of this podcast because right. our perception, our mind is only showing us what's possible. So if we're in addiction, aka desire all the time, you're going to see a life full of wantingness and cravingness, but, or if you're in a place of fear, you know, there's all these bad things happening, but when you move up to inspiration, yeah, we receive. And that is what I'm working on right now. I love it. I love it. Now, if people wanted to contact you, is there a website they can go to? Yeah, you're more than welcome to learn more about me and uh, potentially apply and be considered to be mentored by me one on one. And you can also apply to have me speak on your stage to really invoke the warrior out in your audience at enlightened warrior leader leaders .com. I love it. And can they find you on the social networks too? Yes, you can. And right now, this is actually the most up-to-date way that you are going to get to know me. So if you enjoyed this episode, if it lit you up, if you can feel the calling for more within you, if you know other people that are the people that I'm speaking about, send them this podcast, send them to my website. And I'm very excited about the opportunity to bring people into the vision that is currently being expressed and will continue to express through me. I love it. I love it. Oh my God, Koba, this has been amazing. This was an amazing show. I love it. You brought so much positive energy and powerful energy, no less, you know, and uh, I love the fact that you're helping people really dive deeper into themselves and learn who they are and then being able to release what doesn't agree with them and be able to take the strengths and really build on it so they can really go through life, become that warrior leader and really be the person they want to be. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me here. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. You as well.